Hello friends, the childhood of the children of the USSR was not only boring, it was different from the childhood of modern children. In the USSR there was neither a computer nor set-top boxes, or rather, there were set-top boxes, but not everyone had them, and they appeared in the 90 seconds. But what happened before that? How did the children have fun? How did they have fun and for what could they get hit in the neck by their parents? Attributes of a cheerful childhood of the children of the USSR, for which you can get in the neck. Slingshots. Who remembers homemade slingshots? They were of two types, made of wood, hazel or thick wire. The wire slingshot turned out to be not so massive, but accurate. But the hazel slingshot was made soundly. A piece of leather was inserted into it so that the gum would not wear out and everything that was possible was charged. Small pebbles, pebbles, berries, mountain ash. So let's move on. What do you think a sikolka is? Something from the word sick. So it is. This is a popular weapon for close yod water combat. Before the era of the appearance of disposable syringes in pharmacies or expensive and scarce water pistols, and what could be easier than building a spray bottle from an empty shampoo bottle, a hole was soldered in the bottle cup. A handle without a rod was inserted into this hole, and the hole around was smeared with some kind of sealant, and the homemade water pistol is ready. You can splash your opponent. Everyone knew about the game of dots in childhood, but it was very difficult to buy dots, and they were not cheap, but you could make them yourself. A sheet of paper, four matches, stationary glue and a needle, also on the street. They made dots from electrodes, sharpened one end on the curb, and tied pigeon feathers to the other. Boomerang from ordinary wooden rulers. Now a boomerang can be bought at any store. But earlier such an amazing product brought a lot of pleasure to the children of the USSR. The boomerang was made from wooden rulers, or even simpler, from plastic ones. Since plastic was easy to bend at home for a couple, but the tree had to be turned. However, the boomerang flew very well and returned to the hunt. They were usually used to frighten crows and pigeons, and they were also launched from the ninth floor. Spit pipe was spittle. Another integral attribute of the boy was a metal tube for spitting. They spat with plasticine or mustic balls. It was very difficult to get such a pipe, and it was highly valued in the yard. A large supply of mustic or plasticine was molded directly onto the tube, from which a piece was plucked and loaded into the tube. In addition to moral damage, such a spit did nothing to its victim. Later, the tube was replaced with an empty core from a gel pen and plasticine with millet or buckwheat, or the same grown fruits. But it was also possible to spit out of it with ordinary wet paper at school. Only our generation knows what the connection is between a children's tumbler or a tennis ball and this one. But we know what will happen if pieces of this special magical plastic are wrapped in foil or newspaper, set on fire and extinguish. How many nerves the uncles spent in the garages when such a miracle flew to them from the roof. Knife game. Every kid in the yard had a folding knife like that. Apparently, because of this, such a game was invented. I don't remember the exact rules, but that was the gist of it. A certain pattern was drawn in the sand, and with a knife it was necessary to get into the zone of this pattern. Whoever hit more accurately, he won. Lead. How much of this word? Remember scouring garages, scouring junkyards for old batteries, finding lead? We melted it to a liquid state and poured clay molds, from which various figures or even brass knuckles could be made. But brass knuckles made of pure lead are a very soft product and you can damage your fingers by indulging in such a little thing. Yes, a melting lead at home is very dangerous. You can get poisoned in pays. Who remembers magic stones with a specific smell that bubble in the water? Cobbit. This is a joy for the finder for the whole day. Carrying gas welders shook it out of their cylinders right where they worked. Often in the yard of the house and in a pile of useless white dust. 
a few strong pebbles of calcium, carbide were always found. When combined with water, it reacted and released the wonderful gas acetylene. It is remarkable that it burns well. In what form they did not use carbide and simply threw it into a puddle, setting it on fire and warming their hands, squeezing the carbide in a palm immersed in a puddle and putting it into bottles of water, plugging it with a cork. But the most effective use of carbide was hand cannon. They took an empty bottle from under a deodorant or dechlorophos, cut off its neck, made a hole at the bottom, and put Corbett inside. They spat abundantly on it, plugged all the holes, shook it for a minute, opened it and brought a burning match to a small hole and a volley. My older brother told me that in his childhood they whistled a whole cylinder of cobide and poured it into a drainage well with water. They closed it with a heavy lid with a hole and waited half an hour. Then one boy brought a match in the hole there was such an explosion that it broke several glasses in the area. The lid flew up, hitting the guy first on the chin, and then covered him a bit as he fell. But the worst thing is that he received severe burns to his face, the scars from which remained for life. Never mess around with carbide. Magnesium. We mix the magnesium powder crushed with a file in a certain proportion with potassium permanganate which cost a penny in a pharmacy and wrapped it in a tight paper bag, wrapping it with adhesive tape. They made a hole and screwed a match to it, so that the sulfur head was exactly in the hole. It turned out something like this. Then they struck a match on the box and threw it sharply aside. The package exploded with a deafening noise and a bright flash. By the way, never try to extinguish burning magnesium or titanium with water. There will be an explosion of hydrogen and oxygen, and it is better not to indulge in such things if you are not aware of everything. Slate in the fire. Slate in the fire was not such a fun activity. Well, just one time. After all, throwing slate into a fire is also dangerous, and many times I did not want to get involved in such an activity. But just so you know, the slate should not be thrown into the fire, otherwise it bursts with such force and roar that the fragments scutter in all directions, and little remains of the fire. Crossbows and scarecrows, from an ordinary stick or clothespin, a match crossbow or a pug was easily assembled. They fired burning matches, but it was also possible to build a crossbow that shot mountain ash. Here is such a sample. As a child, condoms were used with might and main, but not for their intended purpose. Those who lived higher up periodically dumped such ones filled with up to four liters of water. Particularly interesting personalities added potassium permanganate to the water, lamps and kind scopes. It was a sin not to break a fluorescent lamp thrown into the trash. They broke with a loud bang, if you throw the lamp on the asphalt end. At that time, they did not think much about ecology. Never break such lamps, because a layer of mercury is applied on their walls, which is not very good for human health. Cartridges for carbonated devices. They found such cans and made very loud exploding things out of them. The explosion was so powerful that I will not even reveal the whole essence of this product. Better not to experiment with it. Flying bolt. An easier way to make a bang was to twist the bolts and nuts with a package tied to it all as a stabilizer. Between these bolts was sulfur from matches. Upon landing on the ground, the bolts exploded. May beetles. Children were also fond of catching may beetles, cups or just hands. The essence of the capture of these beetles is not clear. Then it was not so sorry for these beetles. Now you think that it was pointless to catch so many bugs and stuff them into a bottle, unless cats ate these bugs with pleasure. Dowels. What is the connection between these items? I think our generation will easily explain the connection of these objects. A dowel was driven into the asphalt with a brick, taken out, crumbled matches into the hole, inserted the dowel and threw a brick on top. Bah! 
and a piece of asphalt, as it never happened. Matches cost one copet per box and were freely bought in the store. Pistons. Someone had a revolver that fired these cups, but it was more interesting to scratch the brown spots with something sharp and watch them ignite. Or even more interesting roll up a roll of strips and hit it with a hammer. Ringing in the ears is provided for 10 minutes. Mounting cartridges. Occasionally, someone had such construction cartridges that loaded a construction pistol for driving dowels, and such cartridges also went into the fire. But it was more interesting to wrap them with thick wire and, holding its long end, not the capsule against the corner of the transformer box, the cartridge boomed and unfolded like a rose. Capacitors. In the fifth grade, the school was overwhelmed by a craze for radio components. Capacitive capacitors from the TV were charged from a 220 socket and used as a stun gun on comrades. Smaller pots such as resistors and diodes were hammered into the outlet with a textbook, which led to such a normal explosion. Toy pistols. Still, there were legal factory-made weapons. Remember what you shot with. He shot with ordinary round plates, which even beat very painfully. Peaceful hobbies of the children of the assessor. From peaceful hobbies, I remember braids from the system and colored wire. The system refers to tubes for a medical dropper. They were very soft and very well suited for weaving anything. Cherkash on a boot. How to make sure that you always have cherkash on your boot and do not peel off. It was easy to find a match but not always a box with a chokash. We got out of the situation in this way. They took a filter from a cigarette, put it on the end of the sole, set it on fire and waited for it to melt a little. Then they sharply applied the boxes with the brown side. The rough base was glued to the boot. Thus, the box was always with him. True, I had to periodically update it as my mother scraped it off the shoes. Magnifying glass. The magnifying glass was considered one of our main treasures. With the help of it, it was possible to see a beetle and light a fire in sunny weather. The last function was used much more often. The larger the magnifier, the more productive it is in this regard. And that's all. If you like this story, like this video and do not forget to subscribe to this channel who is not subscribed yet.